It's showtime at the AFI Silver Theater. The projectionists are not getting ready for the film. They're getting the film ready for screening. In the center of downtown Silver Spring, Maryland, there hides a gem in the American cinema that is run by a vanishing breed of craftsmen in today's film industry. Mike Alupas is a projectionist of 37 years and truly sees his time at the AFI Silver Theater as the pinnacle of his career. David Hogue, a prior school teacher, now senior projectionist at the Silver Theater, shares the passion and the attention to detail that is required for this lost art. Calculation, I just use a set of similar triangles and I know the height of my uh, aperture for the 16 millimeter, I know the height of my screen, and I know the distance to the screen to calculate this focal length. I just use a simple ratio, or proportion, I should say. But no, no, nobody knows how to do that anymore, because no one, no one teaches that, because everyone says, well, you don't need it, because we do everything for you. So, therefore, unfortunately, what'd I say? It was a lost art, right? Bricklaying can be an art, it can be beautiful if it's done right. As Mike remembers his early days, he finds new excitement and new expectations of himself. Thinking back years ago when I first started, back I used to like to work drive-ins, but then you know, getting back into the into the uh, to the regular theaters, there was just something about being behind the scene and looking out and seeing all those people, you know, and what they were there for. They were there for all the work that it went into this major production and to, the final thing was to put it through that piece of glass and put it up on that screen and just for those people not to know that I'm there. With the value of each one of these prints varying from tens of thousands of dollars to priceless archival footage and each and every print is treated as if it were the last copy. When I was uh, doing a pre-check over there and one little surface dirt at the beginning this talent and knowledge that is shared between these men shows each and every day. It's a wonderful life done in, uh, in the 40s. Uh, that ratio is 137 and actually uh, uh, it lends itself very well to television because I mean old format television which now uh, that originally was 134 so one, those movies fit very nicely into television. Now we're 16 by 9. Well, that means the side of your television is going to be blacked up if you're writing, running the right ratio. Uh, the film is sound through splices. We check for perforation damage, uh, sidewall damage, scratches, base side emulsion scratches. Uh, I had a friend come in the other night and had a little bit of water damage. So somebody had tilted the can up and it looked like it uh, seeped into the side of the can. But um, a lot of the films that we get here uh, come from sometimes pri private collectors or from uh, film archives, uh, UCLA Film Library, the Library of Congress, um, all over the place. As the reels turn, we are all too soon approaching showtime. That's right, and this each, uh, for every theater and for every machine, it's a slightly different aperture because the machine is a, a little bit different location, the angle's a little different, and so if I were to put this in the other machine, it would be off-center. And uh, so every, every theater uh, has its own set of aperture plates. In this last frame of film, I'm gonna go exactly four In today's world of technology, manual the, uh, changeovers have been uh, replaced by magnetic sensing the, tape and automation. Process. So when this gets to 14-0, I'm gonna stop it and hear my cue. Okay, so this frame right here is where that uh, cue is gonna live. Okay, so 14 zeros there, that's my frame. I'll take this, put it right here smack in the middle. I'll take up my cue foil, lay it across, perforate, ready to go. Okay, this is tail reel five, quick picture. Good to go on that. As the final reel is inspected,
The first reel is then loaded and threaded. And the film begins.